I got it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we have a, a press conference to discuss the uh, recent operation conducted by the Campbell County Sheriff's Office in conjunction with the Genesee County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have uh, a serious problem in our nation with human trafficking. It's a crime whereby traffickers exploit and profit at the expense of adults and children by compelling them to perform labor or engage in commercial sex. When a person younger than 18 is used to perform a commercial sex act, uh, it is a crime regardless of whether there is any force, fraud, or coercion. We know that girls with a history of childhood sexual abuse are at a higher risk for this. Runaway youth are at a higher risk for exploitation through trafficking. And there are an average of 2 million runaways every year in the United States. Some believe up to one-third of the runaway children are being trafficked in the United States, uh, which could equal a number of roughly 650,000 people. Michigan is listed in the top 10 states for human trafficking. Victims may appear malnourished, injured, or having signs of some sort of abuse. They, avoid, they may avoid eye contact, uh, social interaction, or avoid law enforcement. Sometimes they act as if they're acting off a script and lacking personal identification or documents. They also uh, lack any personal possessions. These are some ways that you can help identify someone who may be a victim of human trafficking. In our community, we have one of the most comprehensive services in the state of Michigan is the YWCA and is a provider of 24-hour, seven-day-a-week services for victims of human trafficking. I'll have a phone number for them here in a minute. So after looking at the situation in our nation across the state of Michigan and knowing that it's happening here in Kalamazoo County, I, along with a team of Sheriff's Office staff members, went to Genesee County to study how the sheriff in that county has developed a program to attack this problem, to make sure that uh, the communities are aware of the situation and that they have a way to address this. In Genesee County, they call their team the uh, GHOST team, which stands for the Genesee County Human Oppression Strike Team. Here in Kalamazoo County, our uh, team name is COAST with a K, uh, H-O-S-T, which also stands for the Kalamazoo County Human Oppression Strike Team. Our operation was uh, developed and conducted to help stop this type of activity in Kalamazoo County. The operation, which utilizes different uh, media sources, it was uh, essentially the same per person that was arrested in this. They start a conversation online in chat rooms with someone, a police officer, uh, posing as a minor child. The chat turned to sex talk and different acts. Arrangements were made to meet at a local motel, and the subjects, uh, when they arrived, were met there not by a minor child opening the door, but by sheriff's deputies. From that point on, they were handcuffed and taken to jail. To this point, the Sheriff's Office and the Genesee County Sheriff's Office uh, have made three arrests related to this. Uh, I wish to thank everybody involved in this, but what I'm going to do next is talk about the subjects, their names, their charge, and a little bit more for information wise. We do this to make it clear that we know there are other victims in this community that may have been victimized by these suspects and if that is the case I'd like you to make sure you call 
either the YWCA's hotline, 911, or this sheriff's office because we will investigate your complaints. First subject is Aaron James Bayer, Bauer uh, Gumund, 27 year old man out of Matawan, Michigan. The subject works for uh, Bronson Healthcare Systems. He was charged with a four year felony of accosting a child for immoral purposes. The second arrested and arraigned suspect, all these people are arraigned, is Nathan Lee Russick. He is a 26 year old man out of Matawan, Michigan, and he is a truck driver. The last person's arraigned? Yes. The last person was just arraigned. This person is Abraham Martin Honke. He is a white male out of Portage, Michigan, 49 years of age, and he was a Western Michigan University police officer. His charge, same as the others, was accosting a minor for immoral purposes as well as uh, using a computer on the internet to commit a crime. Both of those are four-year felonies. I wish to thank uh, my team for their hard work and dedication to the work that they perform day in and day out for this community out of a labor of love. I uh, must also thank the Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson for his leadership in developing a program and committing the resources to help sheriffs across the state of Michigan in forming teams like our coast team here in Kalamazoo County to attack this situation, this problem uh, that we have in our communities. Human trafficking is a very serious issue. It's probably the second leading crime in this nation for money generation after drugs. And I have a warning for predators. This operation in Kalamazoo County was our first in our county. It's not our last one. And so what I want you to understand is that every person that has put themselves in a place to have an investigation upon them to be arrested for this act, to be arraigned, and to be to this point, will be brought in front of these cameras so we can reach out to the victims who have not had a voice, who have felt nobody was going to listen and nobody would believe them. So if, again, we can make it clear to people, if you're involved in these crimes, in Kalamazoo County, we will find you and we will arrest you. At this time I can take some limited questions and go ahead right here. Um, so you mentioned uh, the two first uh, people that you named, they're both being charged with four year felony and the cost of child for immoral purposes. The former WMU police officer is being charged with two. Yeah, there may be other charges coming for the others as well. Um, right now, we're not sure if the, uh, that part of the investigation will um, go on a little bit. But uh, right now, uh, today, uh, we are able to go forward with these charges that we've talked about. Yes, ma'am. Sheriff Fuller, uh, we know that a truck driver, a uh, person who worked at Bronson, but then also a WMU police officer was among the three people that were charged. I mean, knowing these are leaders in the community, what's your response to this? Uh, my response is the, that uh, this is a, a, a tragic situation in our nation where we have serious crimes committed every single day and that there are thousands of people out here trafficking and trying to find juveniles to have sex with. And our, our message is if you're one of these people and you're in Kalamazoo County, we are going to uh, actively seek you and we will arrest you. Yes, ma'am. 
Abraham Hankey, Martin Hankey, the former WMU police officer. Do you have any idea when he was working at WMU, how long it's been since he's been on campus? No, I have none of that information. Yes, ma'am. Can you confirm the spellings of all of their names for us? Yeah, we'll have all that for you guys uh, with the picture of each of them as well. Was he employed by WMU police at the time of the alleged incident? Uh, he was a current employee at the time of the incident, yes. He was not working. Yes. Um, how long has this specific investigation been going on for, and can you say how many minors were involved? So again, uh, in these programs, uh, you, you do not actually use minors. You, know, you cannot have a child try to interact with somebody on these types of things. And so it is a decoy. And uh, what I can tell you is uh, we noticed that there were over a thousand contacts within an eight hour period of people trying to uh, talk to and uh, possibly solicit a child for sex. Go ahead. What's your message to parents who, um, you know, may be concerned about their child being online and getting involved in something like this? So uh, that's a great question. Thank you for that. My, my message to parents is uh, be aware of what your children are doing and make sure that if uh, they have uh, the access that so many people do to these phones, uh, to their computers, to any of these electronic devices, that you're uh, a part of their life and that you're making sure that you do what you can uh, recognizing that there's so much activity on, on phones, on computers, uh, so be engaged. That's our best information. The other thing I want people to hear is um, there are organizations in your community, right here in this community. Uh, we have the Kalamazoo Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition. We also have the YWCA. Again, the YWCA of Kalamazoo County is the only comprehensive service for survivors of human trafficking in the state of Michigan. I'll give you their number right now. That phone number is area code 269-385-3587. Again, 269-385-3587 for the YWCA of Kalamazoo. Yes, ma'am. How long ago did these incidents occur? Are they? So this was all in the last week, uh, and it all happened within an eight-hour period. Uh, when we set out to do these investigations, there are a lot of resources put forth to the effort. And uh, they take some time, but uh, this was all within an eight-hour period. Yes, sir. Was this over uh, a commonly used social media app or website, or was this over some obscure website or whatnot that people may not have heard about? Which of the two avenues was this investigation, or was, was this sting operation, so to speak, uh, conducted? So multiple platforms were utilized in this uh, investigation. And uh, the platforms uh, are some would be familiar to many people, and others would not. Yes, ma'am. Sir, how long has Honky uh, worked at WMU for, and did he work at any other departments? Do we know? I have none of that information. And do we know what hospital the Bronson employee worked at? No, I haven't. Yes, ma'am. But confirm you did say he the uh, WMU employee was employed by WMU at the time of the incident. That is correct. So that happened within the last week, sometime in an eight hour period. Correct, all of this was in the, within the last week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sir, was it a shock to you to know that these were people that lived and worked in Kalamazoo but also held like important roles at Boston and then also did the So one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that we've gone and been part of a couple different investigations prior to doing one here in Kalamazoo County. And in those operations, uh, it was made uh, painfully uh, clear to me that people of uh, all uh, working ranks are involved in this. There is no one uh, classification of job out there that is more likely than the other. And so uh, across the nation, when these operations are performed, uh, there have been other police officers, there have been uh, attorneys, there have been school uh, officials. So again, in this one here, I can talk about the three that we were able to uh, apprehend in this uh, operation. Across the nation, we've seen many different uh, occupations involved. Yes? Can you walk us, how, walk us through how this you know, uh, investigation program works and how you capture these individuals? Uh, so, no. 
specifically, I won't walk you through how it actually works, uh, but what I can tell you is um, that it's, it's not terribly sophisticated and that it, is, uh, it involves people who are actively already seeking sex with a minor. This is every day. This is 24 hours, seven days a week. There are people on their phones. You might even see them at the stoplight. You might even see them uh, at the coffee shop. You might even see them uh, you know, sitting on their own front porch or whatever. But there are people actively seeking 24-7 children to have sex with. Yes, sir? Was the WMU officer um, placed on leave or fired or what is the process? Um, what, what is the status? So that person is not an employee of mine and I wouldn't speak to personnel issues anyway. Did you have a question? Yeah, um, you say that there was uh, up to like a thousand pings within an eight hour period. Um, how concerning is that to you? Um, and is there any way to tell if those pings are more localized or could they be across the country? So we recognize that um, in our nation, Michigan is in the top 10 for this type of activity. And so in knowing that, um, having a, a thousand uh, views of the site that's being utilized uh, was not terribly surprising. Uh, it's sad. It's very sad to think, you know, I would love to be able to do an operation like this and find zero contacts and, you know, that nobody reached out. But the horrible reality of this situation is thousands every hour of every day in this country. Chair Fuller, what is your message to the victims, parents? So again, uh, we, we have no victims in this case because it was an operation run by the police where there were no children involved. But I want to be clear, across this nation there are children being victimized. And so to those parents I want you to know that there is help, there are people that care, there are people that will help you do these investigations. If you bring to us the, the information, we will get services for your child. We will get services for your family by working with our community groups, uh, much like the groups I just mentioned and a whole list of others. And in the future, you're going to see more of those different groups on our website at the Sheriff's Office for you to be able to reach out and connect with. And there will be more resources on our uh, our. Uh, website here at the Sheriff's Office uh, within the next two weeks to help people get a better idea of the numbers of cases in our nation, of the numbers of cases that, uh, we're, that are being worked across this nation, and uh, you'll see things like hot maps showing what states have some of the most activity. And the more we can bring this to people's attention, the fewer victims we will have. Yes, sir? Even more specific than the, the shock that you had that it was a WM, now, uh, now former WMU police officer and someone who works at a medical facility, how shocked or surprised or what emotion do you have for the fact that this was the first operation of its kind under your office that was able to net these three suspects uh, given, with, given the human trafficking circumstances here? Uh, so I can tell you, from our past experience in going through these investigations with other sheriff's offices, I was not surprised by the number of people uh, approaching the children uh, for or the, the people they believed were children for sex um, and uh, the amount of money that people will go to get to spend in this uh, type of opportunity and uh, what we have learned about the people. I'm not shocked by any of that. Again, like I said, we have seen this across the nation. We're seeing it in the state of Michigan. The Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office was the 39th Sheriff's Office in the state of Michigan to actually utilize the program in their county right now. This is going on across the state. And so when we talk about this, and we've been to other counties and we've assisted in other ones, we knew that this problem would be here just as it is across the state of Michigan. Yes. Is it accurate to call it a sting and all these three people who are arraigned um, were going there seeking sex with a minor? Uh, it's accurate. To, uh, if you want to call it a sting, that's fine. Uh, but what I would call it is an operation and uh, that uh, we are out here fighting uh, human oppression. 
and that um, it was all within an eight hour period and the three people that have been arrested, arraigned, and uh, presented to you today all were part of that operation. I have time for one more question. Go ahead. How often do you plan on doing these operations considering in just mm -hmm. eight hours you took three people in? Uh, well, again, we've developed a team, and so hopefully people heard my uh, message here when I say, lastly, I want to be clear to anyone looking to have sex with, with a child in Kalamazoo County, we're watching for you, we're looking for you, and you will go to jail. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I really appreciate you being able to take the time to be here this afternoon to uh, put this message out. Thank you. Thank you.